Ray diagrams for flat and concave mirrors. In flat mirrors, it's very easy to calculate the size and distance for an object. In a flat mirror, the height of the original object is going to be equal to the height of the image created. There are two distances that we need to worry about. Distance P is the distance from the object to the mirror itself. And distance Q is the reflected image distance in the mirror. In a flat mirror, the size and distance are both the same as the original object from the mirror. The only difference is, is you will get a reflected image where when it looks like you're moving your right arm, in the mirror it's going to look like you're moving your left arm. But how do we get images that are contoured or changed or distorted due to the curvature of a mirror? There are two types of curvatures for the mirror. When the object that is view being viewed in the mirror is outside the curvature, that mirror is said to be a convex mirror. When the object is inside the curvature of the mirror, that mirror is called a concave mirror. So when we look in these mirrors, we find that we have a distortion due to the curvature of the mirror itself, reflecting the image in a different way. We use what are called ray diagrams to figure out exactly what is going to happen to the image, whether it's going to be bigger, smaller, distorted, seem closer or seem further away. So let's explore how we draw these ray diagrams to make it easier to figure out how the images are going to be affected as we place objects in these curved concave mirrors. First thing we need to do is label the parts of the mirror. First we have a point called C. The C point is the center of curvature. If the mirror were a complete circle, this would be the center of the circle. The distance to the center of the circle is called the radius, just as with the center of the circle. The second point is called the focal point. And the focal point we represent with a capital letter F. The focal point is always halfway from the C to the mirror. So the focal length is measured from the mirror to the focal point. So we have a mathematical relationship of F equals R divided by 2, or R equals 2F. So how are these ray diagrams drawn? Well, there are three basic lines that we're going to draw, ray diagrams showing how the light will reflect off of the mirror. The first way we're going to look at this is with an object that is outside of the C point. Now the first line that we're going to draw we call the parallel line. Now the parallel line we draw from the top of the object parallel to the center axis of the mirror until it strikes the mirror and then that line reflects down through the F focal point. The second line we're going to draw is called the F line. Now the F line goes from the top of the object through the focal point, strikes the mirror, and reflects back parallel. The third line we can draw is called the C line and the C line goes from the top of the object, goes through the C point, and what we'll find is that the image of the object will reflect where those three lines intersect. So when an object is outside of C, we get an object that is smaller, inverted, upside down. Similar to when you look in a spoon, and if you look in the inner curvature of the spoon, you'll notice that your image is upside down. For this case, P the distance from the mirror to the object is going to be greater than from the mirror to the image created. Let's look at the second option. What happens if we place the object at C? Now for this case we're going to draw the parallel line from the top of the object. We're going to go parallel to the mirror and then down through F. We'll then draw the F line the F line will go from the top of the object through F, the focal point, 
reflect off the mirror and reflect back. And what we'll find is the reflected image will appear where those two lines intersect. In this case, we will get an object that is the same size, also inverted. So in this case, height of the original object will equal the height of the reflected image. And we will see that the distance from the object to the mirror, which we call P, is equal to the distance from the image to the mirror, which we call Q. When we move the object in front of C, but outside of F, so between C and F, again we'll draw the parallel line first. The parallel line goes from the top of the object, strikes the mirror, and reflects back through F. We will then draw the F line, which will take the reflected line through F off of the mirror and reflect back parallel. And in this case, we see that the reflected image is larger and inverted. And in this case, P will be less than Q. The distance from the object to the mirror is going to be less than the distance of the image to the mirror. So this is how we get an object that may be much larger, but upside down. Now we have a unique situation if we place the object at F. In this case, we're going to draw the parallel line, which goes from the top of the object, parallel to the mirror, and reflects back through the focal point F. In this case, we're going to draw the C line, now the C line goes from the top of the object through C. Now what we notice at that is that these two lines are parallel. They do not intersect. Because they are parallel, there is no intersection, then there is no reflection. Therefore the object will disappear. We now move an object in front of F. Now in this case, the object is in front of F. We start by drawing the parallel line. But in this case, when we draw the parallel line, when it strikes the mirror, it is actually going to reflect through the mirror. Here we're going to also draw the C line. And the C line will go from point C all the way through the top of the object and through the mirror. And what we'll see here is that the object actually is, up, is right side up, upright, and larger. In this case, we will get P is less than Q. The distance from the object to the mirror will be less than the object, uh, the image to the mirror. P is less than Q. So this is how we now have an object that is right side up and larger. So these are the examples of objects reflecting in a concave mirror and why we see objects that are sometimes upside down, sometimes smaller, sometimes larger, and we get the distortion of these objects.